And now, Kyle Spooner. Hello, everyone. Wow, it's bright up here. Oh, now it got quiet. Ugh. <laughs> Welcome to MS Biggie Con 2024. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to be up on stage again for the second year. Uh, so many photos. This is uh, also being recorded, FYI. Um, I'm excited. Uh, we have a lot of great things scheduled for you this year, uh, and I cannot wait for you to experience them all. However, before we get started, our uh, conference event app, Whova. Uh, we've probably told you four or five different times uh, about our conference event. If you don't have it, it's available. Those QR codes should work. I was told they worked uh, even from the back. Um, so if anyone needs it, it is there. You can sign in with your email address you used to register for tickets, and you can get access to all the great things. You can get copies of presentations. Uh, there's voting that's available, um, all kinds of great stuff. You can even chat. Uh, you can provide feedback to us, which is super important. Uh, if you don't want to provide feedback to the app, you can come find me. I am available. Uh, I am hard to miss, absolutely. Um, they toned the lights specifically for this, so uh, if you can't find me, just look for the orange guy. So, um, Part two. MSB Geek is dedicated to providing a welcoming, harassment-free conference experience for everyone. So I'd like to go over some manners. Uh, I cannot spell the word etiquette, I apologize. Uh, I did my best. Um, so we can set the stage for some profit, uh, proper conference going. First off, let's try to be considerate of space. Uh, during sessions, conversations, events, networking opportunities, things like that, try to be mindful of your personal space um, and also your belongings. Uh, this means like you know, if you're at a session and you have your backpack in a chair and it starts getting full, if you could take that and put it under your chair in front of you, that'd be super awesome. Uh, appreciate that. Um, try to be sensitive to others. Uh, recognize, respect some cultural differences that may exist uh, among some of our attendees, um, which may include some differences in some of our communication styles, personal space requirements, and stuff like that. Um, we actually have like eight different countries represented here with us today, all over the globe. We're global. Woo! It's awesome. Uh, super important note, let's ask for consent. Uh, for physical contact, such as hugging, handshakes, stuff like that. Some people might not prefer uh, the touch of others, especially in stuff like large conferences and things like that. Uh, health concerns, allergies, spread of illness, stuff like that. It might be awkward to ask someone, you know, hey, can I hug you? But it's going to be way more awkward if you hug them and they don't like it. So uh, try to follow cues, right? Nonverbal cues. If someone takes a step back from you, you know, try to respect that space and stuff like that. Uh, be inclusive. I've put this one up here because we are a community. There's a lot of people here. Uh, if you see someone trying to be an introvert, uh, do your best to welcome them over. They have a conversation. You want to have some fun. It'd be great. Uh, if you see something that is inappropriate, crossing lines, please let someone know. Uh, we had staff shirts, and I would say find someone with one, but they're not going to get here till tomorrow. Thanks, UPS. Um, but we do have people manning the registration booth. Uh, you can find me, you can find a few other staff members you may know of MSP Geek, uh, and we'll be able to take care of it. Uh, you can also, in the Whova app, go to the logistics section and report something if you may see. The third. Uh, I did this last year, um, and based on the initial survey that everyone fills out when you register a ticket, I get to do it again, so I'm going to run it back. We have over 50% of you who have never been to a conference. That is awesome. Uh, Second year in a row, actually. Last year we had another 50%, so it's fantastic. Uh, and I'd like to give you some tips from an experienced conference goer um, to make it a little bit uh, more enjoyable, to make it a little bit more uh, valuable. First off, take notes. Take so many notes. You will absolutely forget that one little critical piece of whatever you may be discussing, uh, and it will bother you. Um, these are being recorded, including this. So all my mistakes will be visible to the future people, so I'm super excited about that. Um, however, as we all know in our space, technology is technology, and we don't know what the end result will be. So make sure to take notes, super important. 
Someone's phone's ringing. I want to get that. Uh, there'll be lots of learning. We have lots of educational events for you, obviously. Um, lots of discussion around uh, problem solving, networking opportunities, stuff like that. There's also going to be a lot of downtime, a lot of fun. We have a lot of cool events planned for you. Uh, we have some tonight. We have some tomorrow night. We have some Tuesday. It's awesome. Uh, however, those usually come with lots of alcohol. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, so just remember, uh, we are still at a public function. And the rules in the code of conduct still does apply. Clothing is not optional. Also, if you feel comfortable, uh, feel free to start up conversations with people you don't know. Um, more than likely, you may have met them in the community if you're part of MSP Geek or the Discord or Slack. Uh, don't be afraid to start building new relationships with each other, with our vendors. Uh, it's super important to be able to do that. Some of the best content, actually, some of the best learning happens in what's called hallway sessions, for those of you who are familiar. Um, super important, so uh, awesome. Before we get to the session itself, I have to thank our sponsors. Uh, they are the biggest reason we're here, um, and I want to give a huge shout out to them. Uh, actually, after this presentation, we're going to be going to the left of us, well, uh, stage left at least, um, and having our welcome reception. Uh, our vendors will be in there, we'll have dinner, we'll have drinks, it'll be a great time. So please take a moment, go visit some of the uh, booths we have that set up. Some of them look really awesome. Uh, so please take a moment to visit them, see the cool stuff they're doing, uh, meet all the cool people that are here. It's awesome. Let's get into it. Yeah. Traditionally, these keynotes, you know, these kickoff sessions at most events have a lot of flashly spectacle, right? Big announcements, new features, new products, new acquisitions, fireworks, boom, bang. Oh. I don't have any of that. <laughs> so, uh, at least not yet. Uh, it's also very expensive, in case anyone cares. Um, in fact, one of the changes we have made as MSP Geek, we've already announced it. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, but um, overall, as I was putting together this keynote, uh, going over all the finalizations of all the conference stuff and whatnot, uh, I couldn't really think of anything to talk about that would kind of rival uh, one of those keynotes, or at least be comparable to the fun of those, or even comparable to last year. I did realize that one thing that some of the keynotes tend to miss and tend to gloss over uh, something that's super important uh, at events like MSP Geek Con for communities like MSP Geek is this. MSP Geek is a builder. Uh, the members, our attendees, our vendors, we build it. we're builders. Uh, you build yourselves up, you build others up, you exchange tools and ideas freely, right? You work with MSPs, you work with vendors, consultants, peers to help make the MSP path a little easier. And that's what makes something like this special. And that's important. That's why we don't sell our sponsors, or our speaking slots to sponsors. We don't sell them. You have to earn that. Uh, if you have education or the information, we want you to, to present it, to tell everybody. It's super important to us. That's why we don't penalize our sponsors who do get selected to speak. Some of the other events do. We work, our best to keep, we, we work to do our best to keep our costs down for not only our attendees, but for our sponsors, because they're just a part of the community as we are. Um, in case anyone is curious, uh, it actually costs additional money for sponsors when they get here to set up. The power that they have available, they have to pay for that. And that's stupid. So we cover it. Uh, let's... <laughs> uh, let's circle back to the keynote, uh, kind of went off on a little tangent there. Um, I'm hopefully uh, going to be, I'm going to bring you on a journey of fun, learning, and growth. Uh, last year, when I was building the keynote, the overall plan came pretty easily. Uh, it was our 10-year anniversary, right? Super simple. Uh, I wanted to talk about MSP Geek, our culture our values, uh, bring those up who helped us, who helped bring us where we are today, and uh, you know, have conversations with them. It kind of writes itself. Uh, this year is a bit different. Uh, 
I'm going to take my experiences uh, from planning this year, and I'd like to point out some things I've learned. Hopefully, they'll help you. But we have to start at the beginning. At the end of MSP GeekCon 2023, after all the hard work that the team put in together, the work you guys, our attendees, put in, I had some feelings. Seeing all the feedback come through, people having uh, you know, amazing things to say, uh, having awesome conversations with people about the event, having people I don't know come up to me and say, this does not feel like a year one event. Things like, uh, I absolutely love the community feel and the team, you and the team have given this. Tell you what I felt, relief. Sweet relief. We'd done it. Six months, a group of dedicated volunteers were able to put together an event that was education focused, that was deeply rooted in the MSP Geek ethos. Something Kyle of the past uh, probably would have never thought possible. Hell, Kyle of today would still shed doubt on that. I felt gratitude, I felt humbled. I've been in that position before, I've been in a technician's shoes. Uh, going to a conference you've never been to or even at all before. The trepidation, the worry, the unknown. Literally tons of new experiences you get exposed to constantly. The elation you feel when you're able to go back, solve that problem that you weren't able to solve or overcome that challenge because of new information you got. Being able, being a part of a group to be able to provide that, a part of a community to be able to provide that is very heartwarming. The event itself was extremely successful in any metrics that I've seen. Um, the feedback from attendees and our sponsors was overwhelmingly in the positive. The pressure we had to get our ideas down, worked out, plans in place, caused things to come together quite smoothly, actually. Uh, because of the limited time, uh, we had to limit the scope. For those of you here who were last year, remember the phrase we called not in year one? Uh, that certainly helped out, absolutely. I believe that pretty uh, greatly simplified our scope, things we needed. This picture actually is the perfect example of the overall process we had. This wasn't planned until an hour before we did it on Tuesday, I believe it was. That is Steve. He's one of our conference guys who's helping us out with this event. And that is him directing roughly 300 people on the stairs between 15 minute time sessions. <laughs> uh, I apologize if you did not make the photo. Uh, maybe this year we'll have one. It's happening Tuesday. It's scheduled this time, pre-planned. It's great. Um, while I was basking in that relief, something began to set in. Looking at the planning of an event, uh, on the surface, overall situation, right? Once it's worked out, seems simple to kind of reproduce it, tweak things here and there. You know, kind of like once you deploy a file server, the next time you have to do it, the process itself is very similar, if not exactly the same. Except with the conference, it's gonna be easier. We have a year, full year. We talked about this last year, for those of you who are here. Uh, there is a common trap that individuals tend to fall into, one that I personally fell into. Uh, business owners, technicians, engineers, takes everybody. It's called cognitive bias. That's a great Taylor Swift joke, by the way. Basically, to explain it, uh, the first piece of information you know, and past experiences influence all of your subsequent thoughts, decision-making, judgments, uh, without actually considering what's actually happening on hand. Hindsight, super clear, amazing. The only problem is you forget all the nuance that generally happens with it. I wanna tell you a story. Uh, I was working with a technician one day, collaborative stuff, uh, and he happened to be on call. We've all been there, right? You get a call, come in, start panicking. Oh no, someone's down. But it was a password reset. The holy grail of on-call notifications. <laughs> Five minutes, done. I sat listening to this technician for like 15 minutes. Wasn't a quick password reset and gone. 
this technician didn't just reset the password. He went through the entirety of what could be causing this issue that wasn't simply, and I forgot my password. He asked the user when's the last time they reset their password and pulled up Active Directory and looked into it and confirmed at the same time. He checked to make sure what other additional, like the email on their phone, to make sure that they didn't have anything they needed to reset it additionally to make sure that they didn't call back in with a locked account. He didn't just solve the current issue. He made sure if the user called back, it wasn't because of something he missed in the process or something he assumed. He used his past experiences and knowledge without cognitive bias. I was blown away. Just, just in case it wasn't clear, this is like literally the perfect example of like a help desk ticket from those looking for it. Um, I personally made a lot of assumptions based on 2023, uh, putting this year together. And these biases affected the prioritization I had that I put in place. It's a problem. We'll get to that in a second. So, but let's move on to another issue, another important thing to cover, communication. Everyone's favorite word, because no one does it correctly, including us. One of the ideas I had for this year, uh, something that was important to me, uh, that I felt was maybe missing, uh, even though everything is technically my fault because I'm in charge, this one is super my fault. Uh, and I'd like to take ultimate responsibility for the decision. Our theme spread around, if you can see, in marketing and some of the images we have are adorned in celebration, confetti, party hands. We have them on the slide if you can see them clearly. Uh, for those who may not know, that is our theme, is celebration. My idea for this, and I have to mention that I appreciate those who warned me this may not be a great idea. To those of you who didn't, we are not friends anymore. Um, my idea for this was simple. It was centered around the celebration of success, of progress. We always celebrate the big things, but we don't ever celebrate the small accomplishments, nor do we celebrate those around us who may be accomplishing things. 2023 showed me that we can celebrate the big wins, but we cannot forget the small ones. We cannot forget those around us. We had a lot of wins. Uh, we threw our first conference. Over half of them have never been to one. That's, I think, a record at a lot of events. Some of our attendees, normally introverts, shy introverts, uh, were hanging out in groups, playing board games, complaining that Kelvin was cheating at Catan. <laughs> Probability isn't there, sir. Uh, Networking with others, you know, having, building relationships, having conversations, learning, uh, just awesome stuff. The amount of uh, tiny successes, small wins, accomplishments that passes uncelebrated, uncongratulated is massive. And I didn't want to contribute to that. Because wins are wins, progress is progress, and that, along with you, should be celebrated. Now, hindsight, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is very clear. It, very, it is very hard to take this concept and simplify it into an image or a design. Uh, really hard. Even, uh, you know, not even for an armchair expert designer uh, who had zero experience, like myself, um, to be able to communicate the words and the, the phrases to pass on this idea is a skill, and it seems I do not possess the skill. Um, even real designers have a difficulty understanding I'd like to point out some friends you have already met. We have Muscle Goots, for those of you who haven't seen him. He's got a nice little jacket, some aviators, looking fly, right? We have Wizard Goots. He's got some great spells. If you haven't read them, you should. I worked hard on those. Um, we also have some returning. We have our OG Goots, who's a standard waving. Then we have our Clippy Goots, who's at the front. You can sign him if you haven't. Please do so. We appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you someone who didn't make the conference. Unfortunately, his flight was delayed. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Celebration Goots. It is okay to laugh. I will not be offended. To me, it looks like, you know, those TV shows where someone's holding up a turkey or chicken or something. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it's fine. I've already gone through all the 12 stages, it's fine. 
<laughs> Ultimately, communication is hard. It's okay to admit that, go a different route. Uh, maybe have someone else communicate it who is uh, on your behalf, who understands. That doesn't mean you give up. It just means you need to practice the skill a little bit. Pivot, try again. The key is to not get frustrated. Understand communication is a process and learn from those challenges. As an audience who lives in the IT space, and particularly the MSP space, uh, you should be no stranger to uh, what is the chaos that reigns around us. Uh, like when a client decides to tell you, uh, calls you and says, hey, I am replacing all 25 of my printer copier scanners right now. They're here. Can you re-IP all of them and set up scan to email, please? That is not, I mean, that's real. That happened to me like not too long ago. So. Uh, how about Microsoft when they roll out a great patch and now my computer doesn't boot? This is ultimately the level of chaos I was personally feeling when I was planning this event. Uh, obviously, this is an educationally focused conference, so I'd be remiss if I didn't at least try to educate on some things. Uh, with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about impact and urgency. Impact, for those who don't know, it kind of refers to some, something like a change or a project issue that affects the business from a value perspective. Like if they can't, you know, run finance, they're going to be mad. Uh, urgency relates to how soon that issue needs to be resolved or change put in place. Good example, my printer doesn't print my kid's fifth grade essay at 9 p.m. 100% high impact, high urgency, right? On a Friday night. Some of you know that we put a conference on last year, something that was accomplished in roughly six months, something we would classify as high urgency. We had to hit deadlines and requirements. Actually, a few times we had some meetings where people were uh, possibly inferring that we might be rushing it since we wanted to hit our May deadline. Uh, our 10th birthday, actually, a huge celebration. Not many people get it. Uh, actually, from the time we signed with the hotel, the lovely Rosen, we had four months to put this together. Because if you don't have it signed, you can't sell tickets or advertise where you're gonna be. Some of you may know we are currently at our second conference. This year, we had plenty of time to plan things. Urgency would be kind of like a low to medium. As we got closer to deadlines, as we got closer to requirements, that would increase. But ideally, in the best case scenario, we can execute, finalize everything as time goes on. In a perfect world. The beginning of 2024 for me personally uh, is my personal version of MSP chaos. I running my house with two dogs, two kids, sick wife, my day job, my night job, my, my other night job. Uh, things began to become deprioritized. Uh, some of the things uh, that became more priority were obviously personal, and that becomes more important. I bring this up to kind of provide some context to the overall event planning because everyone has their own personal MSP chaos lives going on. And since we were using the we had time mindset, because at the time we had time, uh, this year's conference kind of, for the planning perspective, uh, wasn't that high of a priority. It never got reevaluated. Until suddenly, hey, we have a conference in like two days. Oops. Uh, we ended up at about the same timeline with the previous conference. Uh, we had about three months left, and um, we were kind of behind the ball a bit. Uh, marketing, asset design, content creation, some things like that. Uh, very fun moment to be in. It's not an exaggeration to say that if it wasn't for those in our conference committee, those volunteers that help us out, um, those who step up to assist us, this year would not be something that I would want to hand in as finished. Luckily, it is. Um, but I cannot say enough how grateful I am to those individuals who stepped up and helped put things in place to help steer us in where we needed to go, to help solve problems that were, avail that were there. So please, take a moment, and can we give a round of applause for our conference volunteer team? <laughs> Thank you.
The important lesson to take away from this event uh, is to prioritize properly, plan early, and reprioritize. Things change. Be aware that it will change. Something else that kind of goes along with that, uh, something that I'm extremely passionate about, something I've talked about on LinkedIn, something I've talked about on podcasts, iteration. It's a magic word. It is of my opinion, which at this particular moment is the most important opinion because I am on stage with a microphone, is that iteration is the most part, most important part of business progress and possibly even life itself. It's an aspect most people forget about. Iron Man. Everyone's familiar with Iron Man, I assume, right? Uh, he made his first suit in a dark cave, and he iterated on that initial design and had like 40-something by the end of the third movie. I'm not counting comic books because I don't have that kind of time. Um, I can confidently say that most people in here, regardless of your position, your role, are more likely to have never gone back to look at a process, a procedure, a contract, a situation, what have you. See if it can be improved. See if you can remove some of the redundancies you have. See if you can alter things. Scripts, code snippets, monitoring. All that has to be looked at and iterated upon and make sure it's still valid with what it is. Situations, context, change. Preferably on a cycle. Every three years, take a look. Take your business stacks, right? All the tools and applications you guys use on a daily basis, things that make your business run smoothly or not smoothly. When's the last time you looked at those? When's the last time you looked and evaluated the systems you have available? I've done a few migrations and I can confidently say that with enough prep time, it's not nearly as bad as you think. We actually have a session that someone submitted and it's gonna be doing a talk about how to migrate your stack and what challenges you'll face. So if you're interested, that is available. But iteration is, uh, is such an important concept to me that I even apply it with the conference and with MSP Geek itself. So I'd like to go over MSP Geek's iterations. For those who don't know who MSP Geek is, uh, we're a community that was built by service providers, office admins, technicians, executives, vendors, consultants, the whole entire industry. Uh, working in lockstep, to stay ahead of the, what is constantly a rapidly changing technical and security landscape. We were founded by Martin Keir, who's sitting right there. In 2013, as a place to share ideas, problems, resolutions of all kinds, centered around the application known as LabTech, which is now known as ConnectWise Automate. It rapidly grew as people began to realize the potential of the ball of complication that is Automate. From there, we grew as others who had joined had additional responsibilities. Some of our admin team expanded into additional responsibilities as well. We migrated from IRC to Slack when we kept our forums around as a good long-term storage option because Slack is expensive. Early on in our Slack journey, uh, we started to see vendors uh, who were not ConnectWise staff coming in and interacting with our community. So we began to create our code of conduct and segment a section off for them to interact with the community. In 2020, we decided that uh, MSP Geek should form as a nonprofit organization in order to protect what we had and help us get into different initiatives that we wanted to do. Also, the free tools were nice. But that brings us to 2024. Earlier this year, we announced some changes for MSP Geek. What I have now specifically at this presentation determined as uh, MSP Geek, the next generation. With any iteration comes challenges. As we grew, our operational team was a little bit too top heavy. Our board members themselves went through their own professional iterations. It kind of left our board with a bit of an unbalanced representation of our community. To solve this, we did two things. The first one, we needed to expand the board. That's a simple one. The second one, 
We need to pivot the day-to-day to a single responsible person. While he isn't a Picard, he might rival Kirk. Mindy Green accepted the role of interim CEO, and uh, he will help us create our structure and volunteers uh, as we begin to execute on some of our goals. We also began a great search to fill our expansion of our board. Uh, Mindy's also resigned his seat on the board temporarily so that he can fill in his role as the interim CEO. So we had another spot. We interviewed several candidates that would fit our needs, and I get the ultimate pleasure of introducing them today. So I'd like to get a round of applause for Jason Slagle. Kelvin Teklar. And Amanda LaChapelle. Amanda doesn't like Stargate, and that's a problem. Uh, and just in case you don't actually know these individuals, here are their real faces. Uh, I wanted to make sure. Um, and with that, I would like to welcome our Captain Kirk, also known as Interim CEO, Mindy Green, to discuss all the things he wants to push into production immediately. Are we live yet? Hey guys, welcome to MSP GeekCon. Um, I'm just a little bit confused because I thought a memo went out about the color coding. And I, don't, I know you're colorblind, but this like, is no excuse. Yeah, I mean, Who's the colorblind person here? You. Okay. All right. Are you sure? I look good in orange. I'm just gonna say. All right. All right. We can we can pretend. See, he knows. <laughs> um, thank you, Kyle. Now that we've finished our obligatory education at the conference, everyone can all go and party for the next two days because we don't have anything else to talk about, right? We just went through like. That's all we. That's all we had time for. Yeah, three or four lessons. We're good, right? Um. I'm not sure Kyle's introduction of me was actually good enough uh, or accurate. So personally, I like to know people based off of how they are in their element, through context. Uh, here are some snippets of things that I said at some point in my life, early lab tech geek days when before it was MSP geek. Um, in short, however, just who I am, I started as a technician. Uh, I was vaguely aware that PowerShell existed. I didn't really know much about it. Uh, my scripting skills were, you know, login scripts to map a share drive or a printer. Uh, maybe delete a share drive or a printer. That's basically it. Oh, and um, I was able to code a password loop in VBScript for reasons we won't get into that may or may not relate to my sixth grade computer teacher being locked out of the lab. Uh, but in, like, in general, I'm a technician, I'm a fixer. I'm not someone who can build things. If I have enough time with a problem, I can usually take it apart and fix it. Uh, but if someone gives me a task to build something from scratch, it doesn't matter how much time I have normally. <laughs> At the time, I was not really gonna make any kind of progress whatsoever. Uh, but that's who I am. Uh, today, thanks to MSP Geek primarily, and the community you guys and the engagement that I've had, I was able to grow professionally to where I'm designing, even though I'm not a developer still, I'm designing applications, uh, automations, you can see a bunch of stuff on YouTube for various things that I've done, and it's really because of MSP Geek that I've come that far. Um, and so I just wanna give back to the community, give back to you guys the same thing that I received uh, to be able to get to that same level or even better, because I'm not that smart. Um, so there were many moments like this, actually, where I've said something that someone in the community, whose name happens to go by Gavin, uh, would decide that it's quote-worthy, and he should save it into an album that he called... Two albums. Two, two albums uh, that he called Shit Mendy Says. And then, yes. what's the second one? Same thing, part two. 
Oh, OK. Well, that makes sense. Uh, so you'll find, if you get his, your hands on those albums, you'll find these sayings, among others, uh, inside of them. It basically describes who I was and uh, who I am, maybe. But during this period, so Gavin and I had joined the community at the same time. His name on the community is Gavsto, by the way, if you don't know him. Uh, he and I had joined around the same time. And we had a habit where uh, we would ambush the new members of the community as they joined with certain questions that had to be answered before the new person could go back to work. Like, this was a high priority. We had to get an answer out of them. Uh, question one uh, was crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Kyle, what's your favorite? Uh, that's an easy answer. It is creamy because anyone who picks crunchy does not know how to finish a task. <laughs> I mean, you've got no argument from me, but back in the day when we were asking this question, we would get a pretty even split, 50-50. Uh, but um, there were some other questions here, and I'm actually going to build on Kyle's history lesson and talk about uh, what's your opinion of SPS. For those of you who are new to IT and you don't really know what that is, um, some people would say consider yourselves lucky. <laughs> right? But Most. Uh, some other people, like myself, so small business server was Microsoft deciding that they're going to build a list of rules and regulations that you have to follow in order for certain technologies to be supported by them. So if you're running like Active Directory or Exchange Server or Microsoft, you'd have to follow a certain set of rules in order for them to support your environment. And then they went and broke every single one of them in a single environment called small business server and said, here you go, sell this to your businesses. Um, and that was, that was small business server. Uh, and then the... Uh, Solution Center updates, for those of you who don't know, uh, this is a lab tech thing, where uh, you don't really know if when you install your updates, you're going to keep all the changes that you've had. Uh, it would potentially overwrite your local changes, and it may or may not tell you ahead of time if you it pay attention to the screen. It will not tell you ahead of time. It will just overwrite your local changes. There was a little warning, but it's not visible necessarily. You have to know that there was local changes there in order to see it. So we would gauge, like, how adventurous you were by asking that question. You'd want to know, like, are you, like how dangerous you are. <laughs> um, because, you know, most people, or some people, if they're not dangerous, they'd be like, well, we want to make sure that I have my changes backed up before I go press that button. And like others, like Gavin and I, would be like, well, we're just going to close our eyes and press it and see what happens. Um, but that's, that was the solution center. So a common feedback that we get in the community when people join for the first time and this is today. We did not know this back then. But we hear all the time from people who are like, well, I feel like I'm uh, watching a conversation. I, I kind of know what's going on in the topic, but I don't feel comfortable injecting myself because the conversation between people who obviously know each other, and they feel like they're you know, on the outside looking in on a click or something like that. And it, it makes it difficult for them to engage. And what we ended up doing by accident with these questions was creating icebreakers that would make them comfortable. You know, once you answer the question about peanut butter, like, you're friends for life. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's crunchy or creamy. Um, you're, well, you're either friends or rivals at that point, right? And then that, you know, like, that's basically the same thing. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's what we ended up doing. And I want to call out that on your badges, if you look behind them, we have a couple icebreakers listed, not the ones on screen. So feel free to add to those, those two. But we have a couple icebreakers listed. We have 50% of the conference is brand new. To the conference, right? Uh, so look out for those people. I think Kyle called this out a little bit. Be aware of them. Be sensitive to the fact. Look out for those people who don't feel comfortable and use an icebreaker and get them to engage. This can be online. This could be in person. Um, the other side of this is that if you're someone who's a long time coming to the conference, um, you know, or, or in general other networking conferences, and you have your friends and your group that you're talking to, it's very easy to get lost in that group and forget about the people who are new. So be on the lookout for those guys and, and bring them in. Um, you know, if you see someone hanging around semi-awkwardly, drag him into the conversation, kicking and screaming, right? Not allowed to go back to work until they answer these questions. Uh, but break through that awkwardness and let them connect, because that's what we're here for, the networking side. So Kyle mentioned an MSP geek. Uh, next Generation. I'm not a Star Trek fan, so I don't actually know what that is. It's clear. But, yeah. So but he is a Stargate fan. Let's calm it down out there. I mean, Stargate. 
I just have to say one word, indeed. Uh, so, let's talk about what MSP Geek is going to look like. I mean, we, we've had, over the years, multiple attempts of doing different things, initiatives that we've wanted to do. A lot of the th times, they've fallen apart because of timing and the workload, and it's just a lot to take on. We've also had multiple times reached out to, uh, well, people reached out to us saying, hey, we want to help. Uh, we've, re we've, we've released a few forms asking for people who, who want to volunteer, and we just never really did anything with it. Uh, so this is one of the things that I want to work on, is I want to bring back uh, a direction and focus on getting these initiatives off the ground, assigned to people, and actually get some movement and progress in a lot of these things. So one of the first things that I did uh, when I realized I was going to be talking about this was I built out the MSP Geek portal, which you can access through portal.mspgeek.org. Uh, the top row of buttons are all old stuff. That's the website, the how to access the Discord form, the code of conduct. Now, I know that you can't really see the lettering right now because it's kind of faded, but as you hover over those buttons on live, they will come into focus and they'll be easier to see. I just didn't want to cover the background picture too much. Um, the bottom row of buttons is all new stuff. So here's the portal at mspeak.org link, the URL you can go to. Uh, the first thing that we have, the first button, is for our uh, vendors within the community. Uh, it's easy to forget that they are community members as well. And we want to try to make that as easy for them to engage, following along with our code of conduct, and so on. So we've had this form, I don't know, for about maybe a year and a half or so. Uh, that we rebuilt. It used to be a manual process where it would take 20, 30 minutes to process a vendor request. And it was just a ridiculous amount of time from the admin team to actually invest. And then because they didn't have the time, it would pile up. It, bottom line is like we built a new form and we built an automation where uh, Michael and I put it together where it now takes five minutes to process, assuming all the automation pieces work, which is a hit or miss because you know I, I built part of it. Uh, but it, if it does work, it's five minutes for it to get processed, pending an approval by um, someone on the team. And then if, there's, if the approval doesn't go through for whatever reason, we want to reject it, it's not an actual rejection. We have a conversation, we figure out you know, what's missing, what needs to happen, and we provide steps that we can bring that vendor into the community. So previously, this form has never really been published anywhere. We give it out upon request. Now it's available on the portal, so if you have a vendor, that you want to work with us, or if you are a vendor and want to work with us, and you don't currently have a vendor channel inside of our community, go to the portal, hit that button, and submit the form. And if you're lucky, we'll approve you. No, I'm kidding. We'll likely approve you or work with you to get approved. Um, yeah. The uh, next button that we have is another form for submitting your information to volunteer. Um, like I said, we've had a, a form before like this in the past. We've had a lot of people come in, especially from MSPGeekCon at the end of last year. We had a, a ton of overwhelming amount of people coming in and saying, I want to help. Uh, if you still feel that way by the end of this conference, then uh, go to the portal and submit your details. Um, we've got a list of initiatives that we're looking toward uh, to put resources against. Some of those initiatives already have tasks and stuff built out. Um, which are listed in our public roadmap, which is now available on the portal as well. It's the final button that you saw. And this is kind of what it looks like, where you can see some of the things that we're going to be working on or want to bring back and where we'll be designated resources against so we can bring all these into the complete field. As we can see, MSP Geekon 2024 is listed under complete. MSP Geekon 2025 with the dates for next year. So. Now that you're here, get out your phones, mark your calendar, because you're all coming back. Right? The problem with 50% being brand new is that half of last year didn't come back. <laughs> so I want to see you all back here next year. Uh, and then we can have, like, I don't know, 25% brand new. I don't know. Kyle's mad at me now, because he didn't want me to say that. Uh, but 2025, MSP Con's on there. We've got the newsletter. We've started and stopped a few times. Um, we want to bring that back. We've got uh, geek casts, vendor spotlights, and things like that that are all initiatives that we want to continue doing uh, towards education and the community. And that is basically everything that we're hoping to accomplish 
uh, by tomorrow. No, uh, by the end of the year or end of middle of next year. We'll find out. Um, and I think that's all I have. Is it my turn again? Yeah, I think it's your turn. I can't see the slide because, you know, I need glasses, but... Oh! <sighs> Can I have the clicker? I'm going to click. Yeah, here's the clicker, I I'm guess. Click. I'm back. I didn't go anywhere, but... Uh, one of the things that Mindy mentioned that's important to us is we want to give back. It's important to us. Throughout this conference, don't tell the hotel this, throughout this conference, there's tiny, mini geese spread throughout it. There's 80 of them. Looks like this, you're not going to be able to see it, but it looks like that. We are going to be giving donations out to these four lovely foundations. If you find one, take it to registration, and there will be buckets available for you to put your little goose in. At the end of the day, at the end of the conference, we're going to take those. We're going to donate the amount of money. Uh, I think 10 grand is the amount. Uh, the board doesn't know that yet, so shh. Uh, 10 grand is the amount we're going to donate. There are also two golden goots Geats that are spread, or there's two of them, so there's, they're, they're out there. $1,000 each to the charity of your choice. Uh, for those who don't know, we have Rural Tech Fund. Um, this was actually one introduced by Wes Spencer, uh, Alex Farling, and uh, Kyle Christensen with their com uh, conference, Rejection Con. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's if you get rejected, you get to go speak there. It's great. Uh, super awesome thing that they've done. Um, there's a local bike charity. Well, it's not local, but we have actually community members participating in this. Jason Slagle, Matt Lee. Um, this is something they're doing. They're biking for MS. Uh, Urban Coders Guild, super awesome. And then Bits and Bites. So if you find a goose, take it to registration, dump it in a bucket, and we'll give them some money. Last but not least, we're done. <laughs> we are officially starting MSP GeekCon. I thank all of you for being here. It is super awesome. Please go take a gander at our vendor pavilion. Some of you got it, it's fine. It'll catch up to you, it'll be good. Have a great day, and I look forward to hanging out with you later.